The first topic of the day is, I guess, a hypothetical. I guess. I don't know. Mike Vernon said on 610 Sports Kansas City that his sources are telling him it is imminent that Kansas is headed to the Big Ten, likely to be announced within the next couple of weeks. And then he backtracked that and said, let me clarify, I am hearing this is more possible than it was just 24 hours ago. I think there may be some truth to this message board rumor. I am working to find out more. His sources are telling him that it is likely. So, I don't understand it. This is a football move. All of this realignment stuff is football. Like, that's that's what it's all been. Chris, is there any football reason why you would bring in Kansas? Now, let me go ahead and add to that, by the way. This also comes right before we heard rumors that Miami had reached out to the Big Ten about possibly joining the conference from the ACC. Now, if you're the Big Ten and you bring in Kansas and Miami, okay, because somebody's got to lose, so why not Why not bring in Kansas? But what do they bring to the table as far as value goes when you're looking at your next contract? What, what, what do you see in this? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. It, obviously, it can't just be football or else nobody would consider Kansas for anything. Okay, that, That's the truth of the matter. Yeah. Right? You can be offended if you want Kansas. You've won like three games in three and a half years. Right? I, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, You're not good, and you're a long way away from being good. And I don't, quite frankly, know how to make you good. I mean, I, I think I think the first step is hiring Lance Leipold. Like, I think I think oh, he see, can turn them into. Where, okay. That's where we disagree, though. But we we like, saw like a, a program in the Midwest like that, Nebraska. We saw how difficult it is for them to be successful in the Big Ten, and now you're going to bring in somebody that is significantly worse that doesn't even understand how to run a football program in Kansas, and you're going to toss them into the Big Ten. And this is worse than bringing in Rutgers, right? A lot worse, a lot worse. Because at least with Rutgers, you get a massive city. Whether TV deals are done that way anymore or not, there are huge volumes of people in the New York, New Jersey area that are invested in Rutgers being good at something. They also have an interest in the Big Ten because the Big Ten has a big footprint in New York in that area. So Rutgers playing Wisconsin and Ohio State and Michigan, all these schools that have massive alumni bases throughout the New York and New Jersey area. That 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 brings a lot of gravitas. There's zero, there's zero Big Ten alumni footprint in in Kansas. Kansas's, you know, extent is basketball and their academic program. Yeah. That, that that's it. And we don't think these deals are being done for basketball or the academic program. So I can't understand. I do find it interesting that it is it went from being imminent, which tells me it's happening, right? Right, right. To well, you know, now it's we, now it's just we, likely. Like I'm we, hearing, we it's think more it possible. Might happen. Like <laughs> I do appreciate the fact that we're we started off with a hot take, which I know a lot about, and then we're backing down a little bit, saying oh, maybe one day it could happen. I could see it. You know, at least the the craziness is going in the right direction. But you said you think Lance Leipold is. The answer, I don't. Well, I think I, I think he's the the beginning of the process. Like I, I think he can I don't at think least... that either. I think they're bad enough, and I don't think they're able to recruit well enough because of their location and yeah. and I, so many other factors. A lot of it, how much money do they actually put into football and the resources? I really believe that this school, if they want to compete, is going to have to play the game in an unorthodox way. And we've yes. talked about that. Yes. I, I think your your never punt situation is an option. I think your triple option is an option. Running some type of gimmick is the only way they're going to slip up and win five or six games a year sometime. Yeah. I could be wrong on that. Something could happen massively. They bring in the right guy, and that guy just find a way to recruit in St. Louis and in Memphis and in Dallas and these bigger city areas and get the right kind of kids there, and and they they turn it. I, at one point in time, they were the number one team in the country, which is yeah. I mean, that was just what fourteen years ago. So yeah, it's, it's strange, but it's just one of those things where I just can't imagine that ever happening again. 
They've been so bad it's, for so long. I think that there is, I think the first building block towards this being at least a competent program is bringing in a coach that knows how to win, right? That understands how to develop players because that's what Leipold did at Buffalo. That's what he's always done. He he doesn't always bring in the best recruiting classes, but you can at least bring in guys and develop them up. And then once every four years, when you got a whole crew of seniors that are really, really, you know, that have been developed well and whatnot, you hit on like a good eight win season, right? Like that's what think, I'm. Do you think there's any world in which in four years Lance Lepo wins eight games combined? Yeah. Well, that's probably true. That's two a year. Yeah. In in. You think? All right. How about this? Can he win ten games in four seasons? Yes. I just don't. I yes, don't see. That. I think so. I well, think. But so. hang on now. Some of that's going to depend on scheduling. All right. If they if they if they get to a like right now, they're going to struggle to beat South Dakota. Okay. Yeah. But like in two years, if yeah, if they schedule three also rands and they get those wins, and now they finally at a point where they can consistently beat UMass and UConn, then. Okay, yeah, can they scrape together three wins a year? Sure, but I don't think that matters if you're just, if the only time you, can they win eight conference games in four years, in in five years? Can they win two conference games ever? In the in the fourth season, like, it, so four years what from now. What is the now, expectation? They win three games, they're three also ran games, they're going to play three pay for wins. How about this? I think that year four, of Lance Leipold, Leipold, whatever, I think that they can make a bowl game in in four years. And like I said, I'm not asking them to beat Oklahoma and Texas because those teams won't even be there. Yeah. Can they beat Kansas State? Can they be, which is a far superior program right now. Can they beat Texas Tech? Yeah, I think so. You know, let's say somebody steals Matt Campbell away from Iowa State and they go back into the dregs. I hope that doesn't happen, but they go back into the dregs of college football. Like, can they beat those? Pro- I'm not asking them to beat Notre Dame. I'm not asking them to beat Alabama. I'm asking them to beat some of the most mediocre teams that we've seen in the country. I have an incredibly high opinion of Lance. I just so, don't think I don't think he's magic, Gary. That's the difference. I don't I don't think he has to be magic to to. I think be if a Nick competent. Saban took this program over, he would struggle to win three games a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're probably right about that. But I, I do think player development is such a big deal there, and I know that he can do it. I know that Lyle oh, no, can I, do it. So I, I agree on I, So we agree on that. I just think at some point in time, you're developing two stars into four stars, and, and you might be able to change one or two of those guys into it. When they step on the field against Texas Tech, Texas Tech's got three, four stars. But like they're, every team they play is just going to be immensely more talented than them. Yeah. Even, yeah, the, yeah. even the mediocre teams that they play – Going to be far superior than them on talent. Yeah, no, you're you're right, you're right. So that either way, me. Th- neither here nor there. The move to the Big Ten doesn't seem to make a ton of sense. Although it didn't make sense for the Big Ten. It's been rumored by a lot of people that this is a very big possibility. Now, one, of course, we understand that the Big Ten is big on academics. Kansas is an AAU school. It's the Association of American Universities, big time uh, yeah. academic. You know, high academic quality that's the biggest part of this I think you know Kansas big research institution all that good stuff but as far as the football stuff goes I think it brings nothing to the table so I don't understand why you would make the move it it, I mean it absolutely is a negative like you now have yes you have teams your other schools can beat up on but you also now have games that nobody wants to watch yeah like when Northwestern has to play Kansas like, Northwestern fans are going to be watching the Michigan State game. Like, they're like, I'm not watching this shit. It is terrible. This is bad TV. <laughs> like, like, I'll watch it for a quarter, and once we're up by three scores, I got other shit to do, okay? Yeah, you, like, you're you not probably even getting the fan base of the team that's beating the hell out of the team, right? That's Yeah, that's So you're true. not helping your TV ratings. You're not helping your ticket sales. Like, nobody's going to that game. Money's getting tighter for people now. Like, I can only afford to go to three games a year. Well, guess what's not going to be one of them? Kansas on the field. That's I do. I am curious because there are so many people talking about how this would, like, boost up the Big Ten in basketball, which doesn't necessarily need a boost, but SEC football didn't need a boost either. I was going to say, SEC football didn't need a boost, yeah. and that would be – I'm telling you, you're talking about the best conference in basketball the last maybe two years, three years. Yeah. <sighs> 
the, the ACC is still good, but I think the Big Ten's been from top to bottom better than them. Yes, and and yeah, it would and and adding Miami and that, I mean, they would become basically the the SEC of basketball. I think. I think so as well. I think so as well. But I, but what does that bring to the table? Like it, everybody has said, basketball basically brings fifteen cents out of every dollar, with football bringing the other eighty five cents. So. But it doesn't cost you anything to bring Kansas in. So, so hey, I don't know that it's fifteen cents to every dollar. It's an extra free fifteen cents of whatever. Uh, here's the thing, though: you got to find, like, in your next TV deal or whatever, you got to find an extra sixty whatever million dollars to be able to pay Kansas, so that it doesn't drop the level that's being paid to everybody else. Because this would be a split share, unless Kansas is willing to come over to the Big Ten for less money. No, I, that would be a bad deal. We have, I'm telling you. The reason the Big 12 is in this mess is because they're one of the few conferences that has like an inequitable contract with their with their league mates. Okay. The the NFL splits everything 32 ways. They don't care that the Jacksonville Jaguars and over the last 20 years the New England Patriots make the same amount of money. All right. They they don't care. All right. One has been one of the worst ran franchises and one has been the best. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to them at all. All right, the SEC splits it every way. Vanderbilt gets an equal share as Alabama and Georgia. Like that, it, it does not matter. Okay, and it's one of the reasons the SEC has gotten as big as strong. The reason I believe that Missouri has been able to grow like wildfire since coming into the SEC. That the reason that every now and then you'll get a South Carolina to win the East. The reason that every now and then that Ole Miss can pop up and State pop up a couple of years ago, both competing, they were both top five in the country for a little while. The only way those smaller teams are able to do it every now and then is simply because they make the same amount of money, so they're all putting a bunch of resources in. So the TV money, the conference money all goes to the same pot, and it all gets split up evenly. As soon as you start saying, I get a bigger piece of the pie than the other team, even if it benefits my team, it's still a bad deal overall. It's just not a good deal. I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with that at all. Let's move topics because we just spent 15 minutes on <laughs> Kansas. Do you think Ten. that the Big Ten should bring Kansas in? No. No, no. not in the slightest. I just didn't know. I, no, I, I it makes can't. no money. Like it makes, it, nobody wants to see Kansas play anybody uh, for I, one. And but that that could be a right now kind of thing, right? Like obviously that can shift, but I just don't. I still see... think in five years if they're just now getting to making a bowl game for the first time ever, and that yeah. might be their ceiling. Or, or is it still worth it then? Kansas like, what are football we about? will never has never and probably will never be a valuable TV property. I just can't. So imagine I think it makes that. no sense. No, I can't imagine that. So anyway. I, the only reason you would bring them in, I think, would be academics and basketball and and i don't think that that's enough money unless the big 10 is looking at something completely it's very different. straight it's very straight like the american could use the academics the pac-12 doesn't need the academic boost the yeah. big 10 doesn't like i would think they would try to go to the acc or the american a, a, a conference that could actually use somebody with to help pull their academics up yeah, you would think so, but those are two conferences full of a bunch of dumb dumbs. But a if bunch you're of state if you're Kansas and you are used to making you know thirty eight million dollars per season, do you go to an AAC where I think the most you could possibly hope to top out at in the first TV contract would probably be fifteen million dollars a school? Well, I, so you got you you got to stop with the I'm used to making this. Okay, I used to have a job paying me a hundred million dollars a year, and then that job went away. And so now I got to find a way to live off fifty grand a year, like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't blame Kansas time, for trying it. Like you I can't keep the money at what they're used to because they've gotten a divorce. Yeah, and that that lifestyle is gone. No, like they, agreed. That other family had a prenup, and you're not getting a dime of theirs. Like you're going to get a one time payoff, and then you're on your own, baby. And, yeah. And so I don't I don't think you can just say, well, I'm used to living this way. Well, tough shit. If if I'm Kansas used to live in a new way. Now. If I'm Kansas, I totally understand shooting your shot, going out there so that you can probably try and live off of Michigan and Ohio State's money, right? Oh, no, if you're I Kansas, this deal's a home run for you. Yeah. But if you're the big and Ten. I'll tell you this, I actually think it's really good for Miami too. I didn't even know the Miami aspect of this. Yeah, these are all I mean, you've seen all the reports. Florida State and Clemson reaching I, out no, to the no, SEC. No, I get it, I get it. But I'm yeah. just telling you, I because Miami, Miami is a private school. Yeah. Miami does have really good academics. Miami brings a massive football fan base and legacy history. Miami 
likes playing Big Ten schools and has a has a history with Big Ten schools. I mean, they're playing Michigan um, State this year. I I would I actually like that. You know, I, I don't like the uh, ACC getting weaker because Jesus. If, you, if if somebody takes Miami and, and North Carolina, what, what are we doing? Like, at some point in time, do we just say, Clemson, sorry. Like, you can't be respected as a good school because you're literally playing bums. You've got to leave and go find a bigger conference. Let's, I put on Twitter that if I was the SEC, I wouldn't go after Clemson and Florida State. I'd go after North Carolina and Virginia Tech. Like, give me two different states and hope that one of them can do what Clemson has done, right? But, but I don't. So I don't know that the state thing matters anymore. Not no really. I mean, there's table boxes. Like I would rather, I would rather have Miami over over North Carolina. I think there's there's still you're talking a, about a historic fan base. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, listen to me. There's still 80 million cable subscribers. This is still like you're still trying to get the SEC network at a premium spot in some of these states. North Carolina's got over nine million people uh, population living there. Virginia has over what well, seven. Yes, Virginia's so massive. Well, I, I looked this up the other day. I guess both those fan bases are pretty massive as yeah. well. And, I mean, it helps out basketball as well. That helps. Right. It helps out academics. It helps, both it of them helps are, academics. Both of them are top 75 schools in the U.S. News and World Rankings. So, like, I, that helps. I know, the, I know our, I know our uh, Big Ten friends are laughing at the North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're still comments. number 28 in the, in the U.S. News. And I understand that those are kind of fraudulent if you've listened to revisionist history. I get that. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> but yes, I, I, it's still helps out the SEC as far as academics go. But I do think that they bring, you know, something for football. And the fact it would be 14 million plus extra cable households that you would bump that that subscription rate from 15 cents or whatever it is up to a dollar. Yeah, whatever which it is. Which yeah. is, you know, I mean, it's just added money. So I really don't want the SEC to get any bigger at some yeah, point in time. What just are we leave doing? it to <laughs> Like, what, what are we doing? Just I, leave it alone. I feel like I'm. I, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Like I don't. I don't know what in the hell is going on with the sport. I, I don't think anybody does at this point. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B G Anini at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.